If you're one of those players who loves winning round 1 by any means necessary, even if it means blowing all your gold cards early, this deck is exactly what you're looking for. So we're playing Death Wish, it's a very aggro version of Death Wish, and it has the new Regis Bloodlust. And with this card here, it got a rework for 11.9, when you lose a round while this card is on the battlefield, banish your deck. Okay, we have the ability to go and consume that, so it'll immediately be in the graveyard if we anticipate us losing a round. If it's in our hand, Banish Self, which is not so bad, but we're losing out on a 10 provision card worth 20 points that we can recycle later. And in the graveyard, Banish the top 3 cards from our deck. So what I like to do, if possible, is put this card down in round 1, start getting the Erendite online. We can go ahead and we can consume that to have it in our grave in round 1 if it looks like we're going to be losing the round. Or we could just float it on the board, whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter early, as long as we win that round. And then we can go into round two, and we can look to play Osril. Now, if we don't play Osril, and we lose the round, then we do lose three cards in the deck, which is not too bad. If we have a lot of golds in hand, I'm not really that upset about it, right? We might just be losing some bronze stuff. But that's basically what we want to do, is we want to go in round one, we want to jam down 20 points. If they can test and they kill the Redis, we can take the Osral round one, get it over with, or we can start leaning into a different strategy. The Brewis Ritual is great for thinning, we have obviously the Succubus play, we've got a bit of control with Cyclops, and we have a bit of point payoff with the Sirens and the Bridge Trolls. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Ideally, what you want to do at the end of a round one is you want to have Regis in the grave. You want to have, ideally, both Giant Toads in the grave, which is not always the case. And you want to have one Succubus in the grave. We go into round two, we keep bleeding in with the Erendite, we have the leverage with the Osral, we have the leverage with the Detlaf. If we haven't spent Bruis, you know, we can start thinning out that way. This deck really drives for the 2-0. So think of it that way. If you really want to put up a lot of points in one turn, a lot of people haven't done this yet because I haven't seen it once. Um, Arrakis Queen into Regis is going to make a 20-point copy. Right, so that could be something that you could play into a bleed round or whatever the case. Pretty cool stuff. So, worst case scenario, you don't draw a Regis round one, you have no way to get Regis round one. You can win round by other means so that it doesn't banish itself in your deck. Okay, so we still could play that in round two. You don't have to worry too much. I have a lot of things for consistency, right? This will thin two. It'll thin four if we go first, if we want to do it like that. We have the Royal Decree, that's a thin one, and we have the Whispering Hillock, another thin one. So, pretty cool stuff. A lot of ways to protect the points with the K-Ren, flexibility with the Succubus, flexibility with just, you know, the Detlaf play, and then the Regis play. I'm liking the way that this goes so far. Um, no offense to my buddy Dagon here, but I just wanted to switch it up. And I think that, honestly, this is just, like, more forward than Dagon. Dagon is good as like an engine if you're playing him as promised and he's really good as the whole like continue the game thing late on if you have a defender and you want to do it that way. I feel like this just has the quick swings that we're looking for to compete in modern Gwent and uh, this is a little bit of a different strategy. So a couple different ways to look at the deck. This is just a new way for me. Okay. I have four games for you guys with commentary for reference and uh, give it a try. Let me know what you think. One of my favorite would be the wild cards here, Cyclops as well. What I like about this card here is obviously it triggers Death Wish. We have a huge ceiling if we really need to do it. It's not always the case. What I like to do is I like to go and take a Toad on something, if possible, and then basically take Cyclops off the Toad so that we have Toad in Grapes. When we play a Death Wish card, it'll bring back out the Toad if we need to do that in one round. Otherwise, we can take the Cyclops off the Succubus, get basically a 10 for 5. If you think about it that way, Cyclops is going to be obviously getting back the points from the Succubus when she comes back, but we're going to be doing the 5 damage, and that could take out an engine, so I thought that Cyclops would be pretty cool instead of going for something like an Alzer's Thunder, or going and spending more provisions on a lock that's not actually removing a target, or going ahead with something like a Bargus, which what I would have had in previous versions, but I feel like we got the consume thing down pretty well, so um, that's basically... What's going on with this one here? 
Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see next. I saw some of your requests on the last video and I'm definitely going to be getting to some of those soon. I just want to pull out some ideas that I haven't really seen on the ladder yet first before I get into that stuff. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for stopping by. Let's get into the gameplay. And if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And drop a like on that. It really helps the YouTube algo and uh, getting some exposure here. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, first up, here we got Syndicate, Blood Money. Bounty is going to be difficult because we're actually consuming stuff. So if they're giving us bounties on things, I only have the one Purify. It could get nasty pretty quick. We also have a lot of tall targets that we're going to have here. So good removal like Heat Wave, Marils, these types of things. It's going to be difficult. Graydon as well. Okay. In this world, only two things. Priority for me is getting Erendite started. So we got to put down five or more points, basically. I don't mind going in for ritual. In fact, we can float ritual too. If they have a heat wave, we could potentially see it. If they have a lock, we have the purify. I want to float it so that I don't have to use a leader charge as well. You can just take a toad off it or whatever else. Actually, that's a really good Cyclops target. So we got the five and then into the four and an armor, right? And now we have a Succubus online for later. We have the extra one in hand and we have the one off of the location. We got to be mindful to not spend everything we want to have some of those for later so that we can get a lot of points i feel like they're their own win condition a little bit of a slow play here coming down with the sewer raiders i want to go and basically take regis here and get that started They're looking at it like, what's that do? It's kind of intimidating. You see 20 points on the board. I know it's a huge heat wave target, but again, if they heat wave that, there are other things that we have in a deck like this that could just stick. I want to consume it just so that we get it out of sight, out of mind, protect the points, and protect ourselves from getting like a bounty kill. That would be horrible. fills up the bank it actually like fills it up twice but I'm glad that's not a thing yeah so Muriel kind of puts them back in the race here they're only down by two points they still have the stratagem we have time to play some stuff like this though we can put down the siren Tax collectors putting in work for sure. Might as well just get the payoff here. It's gonna give us four points. Thought about getting the succubus in the grave, but So I lost the 50-50. That's a card you gotta be mindful of. I think she's so great. Spend six, destroy the lowest enemy unit. Against tokens, it's not very good. However, other decks, it's crazy. I could play around that a little bit by putting down Doldu Lock. We spawn out the tokens and then it wastes two procs of that. The only issue is I I need to get ahead. We 
I consume this, put this in the grave. It's not all bad. The only issue is, like, I want... If they're going to spend six, I need that five to go. So it was an expensive way to spend leader in this round, but... Again, with everything we have here, I'm a firm believer that if we can get that round control, we get the Erendite tall, we're in good hands. Especially, like, in a shorter round two or round three. We like these things, right? That's what we play for. Of course, they get their own point swings. Bounty these days is no joke, man. Old Bounty? Wouldn't be so bad. At least we have that. Little free points. Mind you, now they go and they take out the Peller instead of the Succubus, so it actually kind of works out for them. If I take Osroll here, it gives us that reach and it gives us avoiding the negative side of Regis if we do lose the round. Also makes them want to spend Tall Punish. I mean, if we can get Leader out of the way or get Candle so expensive that they can't use it into a round two, that's all the better. The cards in the hand are still like a good option for uh, you base your on the taking on another assumptions. round. That's okay. Sixty-one forty-nine. Get the five back. We might have to just take the L here. I'm just a sexy little call that Put us at fifty-nine. You have to understand though, they they spent a lot to get the round. We're talking candle, morels, like a lot of stuff. And we did what we had to do for the Erendite. We got some of the carryover stuff that we're looking for, and we have some things left for round three. I think that if they do bleed, we could defend that no problem. And in round three, we still have some answers, so. I'm definitely going to be touching on Syndicate soon. The new cars look pretty good, so. Play it on melee row, get the five points. We get the carryover in the form of Doldu Lock. So what that card will do for us is basically we click that, it puts the highest power unit to the top of our deck and spawns the drones. So at least we know that way we're pulling into debt laugh, whatever the case, right? If they don't have Erendite, or if they're not expecting Erendite, rather, then um, we're going to take out that Witchfinder for sure. But uh, if they boost it, we're kind of in trouble. They would just have to click twice and do it, but looks like they didn't. So we take that, make it a little bit more difficult to kill. We need to spawn the drones, which is a perfect way to get ahead again. They get quite a bit of coins off of if they kill that, though. That's the problem. So Graydon comes down. They probably, yeah, tribute on that. Get the coins right back. 15 to 2. They don't have a good leader target, but they do have a lot of coin if they just want to go boost things, which is kind of scary for us, but... It's not that I'm always It's not it just keeps us going, right? I wonder if I should have stuck the Siren instead. I think it's better that we just put the Siren between two cards versus just floating it, because if they kill it, they get a pretty good trade on that, so... Depending on what we need to do here, if I have time to use the order... No, so it'll probably just be k -Ran to try to stay ahead in one turn and save that card. 
Yeah. K rank comes down at 6, 18, 28. Is my math good? I'm just a sexy little yeah, it's not bad. We get Erendite going into round 3. Lots of points on it. Card advantage. Even more turn for the sword. Yeah, there we go. Detlaf coming out here. I think Foglet's a little late. Heatwave, all the better. We can manage with this. I'd like one of the consumes, though, honestly. One of the other ones, because I feel like we put her down, they kill her. I'd rather have, like, uh, just, yeah, that's much better. At least if we control when it dies. They over profit. So they got six on that. They already had five. So they got four net. We have points on the board. Again, I'm not too worried about the second consume on the debt left. We could have potentially avoided that if we played Succubus on melee in round two, but whatever. There we go. We got Royal Inspiration coming up here next. I played against a deck like this one time this season where they also had Regis and they were flipping Regis with one of the uh, Kedwani Knights kind of thing. Just flopping it over to a bronze card at 20 power so that it negates all the abilities and then bringing it back with like necromancy. It was pretty cool. Come to me. When I see this deck, this patch, I have to expect something like that, but we'll see. So Redanian Knight goes down. We have kind of like an engine on the board as well. I consume it quickly because I know they have heatwave in a lot of these decks. And I don't want it to get heatwaved because then we lose the additional 20 points that we get off of the resurrection or the consume from grave. You know what I mean? This is good for me. And worst case scenario, they squirrel mine. I can Ozreal theirs at this point because they do have a Regis as well. Oh, it's it's the Cursed Knight rather than the Kedwendi Knight, by the way. That's what I meant. So yeah, that's the interaction I was describing. You see it right there. If we really want to nitpick on sequencing, we can put the Toad on the left so that if we do consume her in the middle, it works properly for the Death Wish. Yeah. So round one, we take it. It's looking all right. Aaron Knight's at five. Okay, heat waves exactly what we need here. So we're facing a little bit of an issue because if I lose round two with Regis in grave, we lose the top three cards of our deck. And I missed pretty much the Osroll here, and uh I was expecting that we'd have it. Let's see what they... We just go for the double carry over play here. Oh, 
Retreat! Damn it! Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can do anything about that carryover, so they get the six points. Sure enough, they do get rid of the Regis as well. So they actually do the job for me, which is great. I expected that they would do that from the start. Worried about the Oz roll, but now we don't have to worry. You know? We just take theirs. A lot of important cards at the bottom of the deck. So I have no Death Witches. So I have to put that back. So we don't brick Hillock. Peller's okay. They have a lot of infusions on their side of the board. Uh, we still get the Oz roll, which is great. We gotta answer this though first. That's huge. So place for too many points in a long round three. The issue is they're coming out first. We need to get Erendite turned on here. Yeah. So they heat wave that. However, it takes away from what they're doing as well. So now, again, just playing for the Erendite at this point, making sure that we get the best removal possible. I want to protect myself from a lock. Just keep it the way it is. Thinking about taking care of that right now, but I feel like we're supposed to wait. Let's kind of focus on our own thing here. Honestly, now that I think about it, I probably should have played that on melee, used the order for the extra four points. Because I had the Peller if they locked it. I just really want to save the Peller maybe for like an infusion or something like that. So... It's kinda, you know. Guess we'll just play it out and learn. I know they have a lot of points left. A shield maiden's gonna slap here. There's nothing we can do about it either. And the purify now seems too slow. So yeah, it was definitely just floating the Arrakis and hoping for the best. They did use the heat wave after all, so. Relax. We'll sandwich those, get the best value out of the consume, and then we can go in, we can take the K right after, protect our points. It looks okay. So they do bring the Errant back, that's likely gonna be the Errandite target. I guess so. It's hard to say. Ye who wander on the gale, ye we summon, ye we call. They actually shut off their Knight Errant by one point by putting that there. It's kind of awkward. I don't want them to really realize it, but it doesn't look like they do yet. <laughs> um, using k Ren right here doesn't make sense. I think we just go ahead and take care of it. Just uh, something maybe we should have done before. I feel a little bit safer about putting, obviously, the, the points a little bit wider and putting the 7 on the drone instead. Comes down with a Peller, they got the plus three and two and one off the engine. 
That's a lot of points. Okay. We beat this? Yeah, <laughs> no way. I could have played that a little bit better, though, in round three. Moving on to the next one here. I have Off the Books Syndicate. I feel like Bounty is worse for us than this deck, but this deck, I believe, has more points if it's just like a mid-range list. We have access to everything that we need going into the round, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay. Brawler's annoying, but I'll puzzle them from the get-go here. We'll, we'll go ahead and put this down. <laughs> They're going to be like, ah, do I click? The worst would be if they had a lock, and then they used Stratagem, and then they killed it, but I'm feeling confident. Yeah. Let's go. Either we take the Indriga here just cause, or we go and we take the Siren. Indriga feels a little bit better for me, because we're probably going to have to commit Regis in this round. And I feel like Siren's just a very good card, no matter where you are in the game. In Jiriga, a little bit more circumstantial. One consume's not bad. If they have tall punish, we're not playing too tall. So. Yeah, it's looking like we got to go in for the swing here. Brawler is such a good card at handling round one. If you can keep a Brawler on the board, and the Intimidate helps. So whenever you're playing a crime, that card's going to get a one boost. Just thick. It has the ability to spend down and to just make coin perfect, right? We're not over-profiting. We're spending down the amount we need to for other cards to benefit in the deck. It's just great. I'm not really worried with Syndicate killing off Regis super quick. Unless they're running Poison or like a major tribute. When they take Vivaldi Bank here, I know it's probably not going to be a, a one-turn answer. Regis. I believe they were looking to roll poison, but it's hard to say. The round is not as close as I thought it was going to be, unfortunately. For the sake of protecting ourselves against a loss, we could consume... the foglet get a little bit of extra value there on the uh the fog and whatnot wow such a good swing they're like right back in it with one play it's crazy maybe we just gotta double up here i'm feeling pretty good about it i am up i should wait i think we're gonna take the plus four spawning that extra couple drones and then we can consume it
they got the bonded on the slice too. It's kind of bad. Consume it, get it out of play. I'm thinking that we take this round. It's like I, I don't I don't see a situation where we lose this round, just given the amount of points we have on them and the way they spent down, but There's an argument to just take the Chimera there instead on uh, on the Foglet. Just so that we don't have double Graveyard with Regis. There's only so much farther they can go. They're turning off the horde values on the peaches on the back row, and whenever they spend six, they're killing a token. So it's actually pretty awkward for them. I feel like that's a panic spend. We do the one, then that, and that, so they boost the adjacents and then go, and then... That should be alright, we hit it with a tie. Like, I'm feeling really good about a tie. If, if they decide to pass here, like, I've thinned, I've gotten value on everything I need, I think that's the way to go. They spent a lot as well in round one, I still have full leader. We got Dead Laugh, we got Erendite, we got everything. So we're going to take that the best we can. I was actually a little bit blindsided here by the way that they were able to stay in the round. That's like a really good hand. We wouldn't mind like a tall punish though. But I think we just keep five card round. We should be able to put up like 60 to 70 points here, right? Looks like some light raising. It's not that I need this. It's you who's always sexy. There's actually an argument to take Succubus first. I just kind of wanted to flex with the dead laugh, but she has Adrenaline 4. So if I were to put her down, take Leader, we'd get her back right away. The thing is, though, if we just clear off the dead laugh stuff, then we could just do her for two turns in a row. We only have so many consumes anyways, so it feels like, you know, this was just fine in managing what we had. So we go down with the other Toad, we get her back, we take the 21 point Osril, and we should win the game. Again, I took them, sort of underestimated them in round one, so we'll see. A connection lost, eh? Okay. False alarm. Pumping out scenario in round two, five card. We'll see what it does for them. Best commodity in town, I swear it. Sword of the order, flaming rose. Up by twenty so far. We get a 
with nine point turn there. We're not done if you can still walk. Akarancha? Oh no. This could actually change things a lot. They got three more, they have four coin. <laughs> they go put the shield on to get the other card, okay. Smart, works. They just don't have enough left for the, the actual horde values, right? They're not reduced in this case because it's not hidden cash. Reed is coming out of 20 points. They get the plus one on that. We missed Erendite. It's too bad. We're up by 20 points, though, so we'll see. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Couple of gambles in that one, but it is what it is, man. And moving on to the last game of the day here, we have Mahakam Forge, Dwarves, Scoitel. I just put out a deck guide for Dwarves yesterday. If you guys are looking for some ideas on how to play Dwarves now in 11.9, check it out. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite things lately. I know Dwarves tempo dump pretty hard early game, so I need to have some of the stuff that we need to make that happen too. So we miss every way to get Regis, that's great. So in order to keep Regis in the deck for late game, we have to win the round. I can't say I love floating ritual when I don't have a Peller in hand, but again, sometimes you gotta take a chance, because I think if we take a leader charge there early, it feels pretty bad, you know? Perfect setup for the Cyclops, two for two value in today's video. We get the Fin out, we get another Consume, which is great. We get one of the Succubus out, which is great. Just do like a bridge troll. I don't want to go too hard. It's a lot of good stuff that we just need to get. That we just need to get. We got 21. It's like a decent lead. Obviously they have five points floating on the board. I don't know. It might not be possible to win the round if they keep going like this. So we're playing both of these. It's not all bad though. We actually have some bronzes that are trading up here for a good amount of points. We could put a succubus in the grave. We can make a copy if if we have to. We could spend leader if we're desperate. We have a lot of tools. Like, it's not the end of the world if I spend everything, especially if we get a lot of trades as well, you know? Triss, okay. That's cool. Armors workshop at the Triss. I mean that's crazy. Wasn't expecting that. So we get the plus four. Got to stay ahead a little bit here. I'm trying not to just spend it all in one shot, you know, but I have to think about the future. If they're spending Triss. It's telling me they probably want this. I 
Alvin Sear, okay. See, I had some ideas with playing like the new location with Elven Sears and doing like a whole Orbs deck, but it's cool to see that in a Dwarf's deck. Just go ahead, take the spawn here, and go for the consume, get the extra spawn there. We're up by one point, but they actually go ahead and get the armor payoff, so we're, we're tied. I have to just thirst it. I don't have a dirty mind. Irish Shade. Damn. That's kind of cool. Creativity is like on point for their deck though, for sure. That's awesome. It puts me up, not enough. We gotta... Looking at this, consideration to actually have put that on melee, hoping that it would spawn on ranged, so that we'd have adjacent succubus for after it's not the end of the world now it's even justified because they play the lock whatever it's begging to be heat waved berserker putting in work couple extra points just to tell them just give up but i don't think we're gonna <laughs> it actually backfires too ah Okay, I spawn on the range, it goes in the range. Well, I'm glad they passed. The deck guide says went uneven by any means, right? Do what you gotta do when you gotta do it. Now we got the 20 points. Let's go. Heat wave. Probably put back one of those, yeah. That's promising. Erendite's at nine, death. <laughs> Yeah, we miss a lot of cool stuff, but. Five cards and one of them's worth 20 points. It's not how I always like to play, but it's how I think you're supposed to play when you're playing this card. I don't have a dirty mind. Man, and the fact that we can consume her two more times. This might be 2 0 territory, man. It's not that I'm always Depends. I'm considering if I should. If I should consume the Regis just to keep it in grave instead of on board, just in case they want to banish it. We run the risk of if we lose the round, losing Osril in round three, but it's kind of an all or nothing thing, and we're already up by a lot of points. I think we're going to be okay regardless. All right, well, they did it for me. <laughs> no laws roll for us. She comes back, 31 to 11. We got a heat wave. If they play anything tall, it's looking pretty good. Oh. No way. That's a lot of points. Now we just have to rely on this heat wave being worth 11 points here being enough. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so close. 